Hey folks, I'm back with you again. Today I'm going to review and give you my first impressions of the Hatson 135QE. I'm going to start with an unboxing video. No, I don't think so. Those are dumber than hell. Anybody agree with that? So, this is the Hatson 135QE and 22 caliber. It's a big rifle for a pellet rifle. And just like the Crossman pistol, I got this because this year when I got back into shooting competitions, I did middle of the pack on a uh, CMP shoot, uh, shooting my M4 against everybody else shooting M1 Garands. And I probably could have won or at least taken second place, but I had four zeros in the offhand. So I wanted to get a rifle that I can practice with around the house that's not going to piss the neighbors off and not going to get the cops called on me. I researched a lot of rifles and this one seemed to be pretty good. It's a heavy rifle. This thing's 9.4 pounds. Real similar in size to an M1. It's 47 inches long and the barrel, I'm not, I'm not a pellet guy. You know, I just got these kind of out of necessity because I need to practice with something. But the barrels are short on these things. so. Accuracy so far has not been quite what I wanted, but I didn't want anything with a scope. I wanted iron sights. Uh, iron sights are a lot harder to shoot. Uh, the rifle is, like I said, it's nice and heavy. It's got a nice uh, walnut stock. It's made in Turkey, and it's got the Quattro trigger. It's three-way adjustable. You can adjust the length of the trigger pull on the first stage. You can adjust how hard that first stage is and you can adjust the overall trigger pull. It, it's got three screws to do that with. The very back one, which is on the trigger pull itself, is a little bit hard to get to, and I found that they don't, don't have a whole lot of adjustment in them, but it is adjustable. I really like the adjustable comb on it. I've got it jacked up a little bit because that just seems to be uh, the way it's shooting the best for me. It's got fiber optic sights, front and rear, and a little bit closer view on that. There's the front and the rear. Um, I was a little bit unimpressed. Came out and shot it a little bit. I, I was trying to get two to three hundred rounds to it before I really started giving it a, a good evaluation and accuracy test. And the second time I came out to shoot it, I'm like, hmm, where's the front side optic? It's broken off. So I've got another one in there. They're pretty easy to replace but you have to have the right size. This one took a uh, .060. I'm gonna show you some uh, videos and stills with a little bit of aeration about uh, some accuracy tests we've done on it. And we'll do some uh, velocity tests as well. I've, I've chronoed it a little bit and seems to be averaging around 900 feet per second. And that's with a uh, 16 to 17 grain pellet. I've got a Ferro Concept Slingster sling on it. This one came off of my uh, AR-10. Um, I bought it because I needed a, a sling for my AR-10. They, they didn't have anything but the uh, this camo pattern. I really wanted the uh, black uh, multicam, and they had those in a couple of weeks ago, so I ordered that, took this one off, and put it on the hats. And doesn't look great, but serves the purpose. So a couple other things. It's got the what they call the anti-bear trap safety. So break the barrel down, put a pellet in, cock it, it's ready to go, and the safety automatically goes to safe. So you have to pull it off. That's a little bit inconvenient, but you know, after you shoot 40, 50 rounds through it, it gets to be pretty automatic. You cock it, you know, you just pull the safety off as you're pulling it in, into position. Um, another thing I was a little bit unimpressed with is the ergonomics of it. Um, I'm a pretty big guy. I'm 6'1", 260 pounds. But, and I've got decent sized hands. But the way the pistol grip on, is on this, it is just, the angle is off just a little bit. I would like for it to be just a little bit more forward where I could put just a little bit more finger on the trigger without having to reach unnaturally. But, uh, you know, somebody with smaller hands, I think it's going to be even more of a problem, but, you know, i got pretty good-sized hands. So, 
Let's get to uh, some accuracy and velocity tests on it. Okay, we're going to do some accuracy and velocity tests today. I've got four different pellets that I want to test. I've got an h and X site, 14.66 grain, and all of these are lead pellets. There are no alloys in them. Uh, I've got a Norma 5.9 grain Golden Trophy FT, dome point. I've got an h and Spike, uh, it's a 16.05 grain. And I've got a Vortex Strike, 17.75 grain. I think this rifle is going to shoot the best and the uh, shoot the best groups with uh, a 16 and a half to 20 grain pellet. But these are the heaviest I have right now. And uh, the conditions today, it's a it's a high overcast to partly sunny at 75 degrees. Winds are reported at 225 at five gusts to 10, but they seem to be more out of the south. But uh, and my little range here is set up shooting south to north. Um, and they're variable a little bit uh, in the direction. One of the things I've noticed about this rifle that's kind of weird, I know it's a brake barrel and I know on the uh, uh, spring breakers that you have to use what they call the artillery hold. This is a gas piston and it doesn't seem that it matters to the rifle if you do a tight hold or an artillery hold on it, but something I've noticed that is really weird is yesterday I was shooting uh, everything in the offhand. I shot 25 and 50 yards, but I had to, it was shooting about seven inches high and I had to bring the sights down and it was shooting uh, a little little to the right from where I had it set up on the bench. And uh, I think two things are going on here. I think one is you get a variation in the harmonics as to where you're holding the fore, foregrip here. So when I'm holding in the offhand, my hand's about right in here and when I've got it on a bench rest typically I've been resting it out here so I think that sets up different harmonics uh, so what I've done today is I've pre-shot a few rounds and I've moved the rest back to this same area and I had to move the sights again uh, I had to bring it down five or up five I'm sorry and uh, seven to the right so we'll see how it shoots Okay, we're going to start with the Vortex 17.75. Eight seventeen. I'm going to shoot ten shots on the. shoot 10 shots with each pellet. That was 834. Eight fourteen. Seven eighty six. Thank you. 
826. Eight twenty four. Eight twenty five. Eight thirty two. Eight fifteen. Seven seventeen. Wow, that was a big change. I must have miscounted pellets somewhere. <clears throat> Seven ninety six.
Let's go measure the group. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this was the Vortex Strike 17.75 grain, 10 rounds at 25 yards, with an average velocity of 806.9 feet per second, and an SD or standard deviation of 33.14. Vertical spread was 2.73 inches, horizontal was 2.16, and extreme spread was 4.03 inches. That gives a group size of 2.973 inches. So now we're moving on to the H&N Spike 16.05 grain. If I didn't mention it earlier, we're shooting at 25 yards. Let's save a little time and try to keep your interest here and speed this one up. This one's shooting a lot tighter groups. One thing I didn't mention in the review of this, they say it takes 50 pounds of caulking force to cock this thing. Pretty big, pretty strong guy. It's uh, it's stout. If you're a person of smaller stature or strength, it's going to be a quite a workout shooting this all day long. Okay, let's see what kind of group we got on that. Find an extreme spread. Right there looks like 1.76. Yeah, that other's gonna be a little wider. Maybe not. We'll call the uh, horizontal 1.68 and the vertical, that's what we had a minute ago. One point nine. Two four. Where did I get that first one? I think we're just going to have to go with uh, the one point. 1.76 and 1.6 8 so we're going to take uh, this one out no which one we got to take out Right, we're going to go with the 1.924 and the horizontal of that. I don't know where I measured that one. I'm going to take that one out. So that gives an average on the group of 1.802. So that's the H&N Spike 16.05 grain, 75 degrees, 10 rounds, 25 yards, 2083 on the density altitude. 
we got a horizontal spread of 1.68, vertical, which is also the extreme of 1.924. It gives us an average uh, of 1.802 on the spread. And the average velocity was 870 with a, a much smaller deviation. We had plus three and minus three, so uh, greatest deviation of six. And the lowest SD of any of them, but 2.49, which is amazing. This will probably be our best pellet. Now we're going to move on to the Norma Golden Trophy FT 15.9 grain dome. If you wonder about uh, my abilities as a marksman, keep in mind that I was 10 years in the Marine Corps, eight times that I qualified on rifle, a uh, high score of 247 out of 250, and the lowest I ever qualified was 225 out of 250. For expert, I usually averaged around 240 to 243. So yeah, I know how to shoot. Um, these are iron sights because that's what I have to shoot the prone and what I've been shooting. And would the groups be a little bit better with uh, scope? Probably would be, but I don't shoot a scope on this kind of shooting. So That was 791. So on the Norma Golden FT 15 9 grain, uh, 10 rounds, had a vertical deviation or vertical spread of 2.38, horizontal of 1.09, extreme spread of 2.35. Well, the vertical is actually bigger than that, but I wanted to get three in there anyway. That gives the average spread of 2.21. Average velocity was slower than the H&N spike at 861.6. The H&N was 870. A lot bigger deviation. Uh, slowest round was 791, gave a deviation of minus 70.6, and the highest was 888, uh, gave a plus 26.4, so the spread was 97. Not the best pellet. Okay, so now we're gonna do the H&N Excite Hammer, 14.66 grain. These have a rifled body. I'm interested to see how that's gonna affect the accuracy at all in the European. So the H&N X-Height Hammer with a rifle body, 14.66 grain, definitely the fastest at, with an average velocity of 914.3, had a deviation of minus 38.4 and plus 12.2, so that gave it a spread of uh, 51 on the uh, Grouping had a vertical spread of 2.61, horizontal of 2.74 for an average of 2.65. And here in a minute, I'm going to show you the uh, other charts and how they rate it out against each other, like best pellet number one, uh, number two, number three, number four, etc. So for shits and giggles, while we're still all set up, I'm going to see what velocity does on these pellets uh, I lubed them up with dry silicone and these are the same H&N XI hammers that were averaging 914 feet per second let's see if these get any more accurate and or any more velocity So, my takeaway on the accuracy and velocity test of the four different pellets, um, we went over what the uh, average velocity was and what the deviation on the spread was. Um, I took the average deviation on the spread and the, uh, rated the highest velocity as number one. The highest velocity was the Excite Hammer. So, for example, the Excite Hammer had the highest velocity at 914.8 and it had on the group spread 2.675 so that velocity was number one and the spread was number three added those together came up with an overall rating of 2.0 the number one pellet was the H&N spike it had a average velocity of 870 which gave it uh, number two on velocity and it had an average spread of 1.802 which gave it number one so I had number add two and one together three overall rating of 1.5. 
the uh, Norma 15.9 at an overall rating of 2 and the uh, Vortex 17.75 grain at an overall rating of 4 being the slowest on the velocity at 8.06.9 8 and average spread of 2.97 the largest and uh, here's the results from the pellets with the dry graphite on the h and XI hammer they came out on an average of 921.67 that gave it an increase of 6.87 feet per second or 0 0.0075 or three quarters of one percent gain so don't really know that it helped the accuracy at all but it did make them a little bit faster I'll get that in there for a shot hopefully Hopefully that'll focus. If not, I'll stick a picture of it in. So, overall thoughts and review on the rifle. And yes, it's dinged up a little bit right there. It was leaned up against the truck and fell. Uh, you know, rifles are going to get some wear and tear. Um, I'm not super impressed with the accuracy of the brake barrel uh, gas piston. I mean, this rifle, it's okay. It's a little finicky. It suits my purposes really well, which uh, my purposes was just to get in a lot more practice in the offhand shooting position. The weight of the rifle being 9.4, 9.6 pounds, that's a plus because, well, like my M4, I think it weighs about 6.8, and my AR-10 at weight with the scope, it weighs 11.2. So, nice uh, heavy rifle uh, to work on the offhand. I like it because of the brake barrel simplicity. You know, there's, there's nothing to pre-charge. There's no CO2 uh, canisters to change out. I don't have to buy an expensive air compressor or scuba tanks for that PCP crap. Um, would I buy it again? Yeah. I mean, it retails for like $300 with no scope. I got it for, I think it was $269. Um, I think I ordered it on Midway, I'm not sure, but it's a pretty good deal and I'm going to get a lot of life out of it. I'm going to experiment around with pellets a little bit more, but uh, right now it looks like the H&N Spike is, is the winner. So I hope you enjoyed the review and uh, keep checking back to the channel. I'm going to do uh, more. I'm kind of firing the channel back up. Uh, I had a really popular review on some optics and that's been like five years ago. So. Uh, going to review uh, hunting and shooting stuff and uh, maybe a few entertaining stories uh, from my aviation career. I'm a, uh, for a full-time job, I'm a 747 captain, fly all around the world. So yeah, there's lots of interesting stories with that, but I want to keep the channel fairly narrow. Uh, shooting, hunting, maybe a little fishing, and some aviation stories. And if I ever produce any more uh, video shorts or music videos uh, like I've done in the past, I may share those on the channel too, or they may just go up to whoever the customer was or uh, on their own channel. But thanks for tuning in. Hit that like and subscribe button. Hope to see you again.